Recently, a new bleeding pipe vulnerability was published that made millions of Minecraft players vulnerable to being hacked, but is this vulnerability anything new, and should you be concerned about what Minecraft mods you install? Now, before we get into bleeding pipe, I want to talk about Minecraft and vulnerabilities. Literally, at the start of June this year, there was a massive virus called Fracturizer. Fracturizer started off as several innocent-looking malicious mods and plugins that were uploaded by the malware creator on Bucket Plugins or on CurseForge's Minecraft mod section. Now, this malware was composed of stages, and this is from the beautiful write-up of the Fracturizer malware, which I'll have linked in the description, but they have this diagram in Comic Sans with subway servers on the side, so if you get bored, just take a gander to the right. But the malware starts off in stage one, where you download the jar file and you add it to your Minecraft mods. In the background, it would download another jar file called dl.jar, and it would save it to the memory of the computer so that it didn't get detected by your antivirus. That would be stage one. Now this dl.jar jar file would download another jar file, it's an obfuscated jar file, called libwebgl64.jar. Now, this malicious jar file would hide in the cutest spot of all time. So if you open up your computer right now, you press the Windows key and the R key together, you get this run window, and if you put in percent local app data percent and you press OK, it'll pop up with your local app data. Now, if you look through this local app data folder, you might notice that you have a Microsoft Edge, wait, I have, I have two Microsoft Edge folders. But the Microsoft Space Edge is actually part of the malware. The malware would hide itself inside of this folder and just wait. While this is going on, Stage 2 will also make it where this file will open on startup. And welcome to Stage 3. Stage 3 is client.jar, and this is a massive bundle of naughty malware. It steals your login info, your usernames, and your passwords that are saved in your browser. It also steals your crypto wallet if you are a crypto nerd. I should, if you're an idiot, sorry, messed up the phrasing there. The final thing that this malware would do is that it would scan your whole entire system looking for .jar files, and it would convert those perfectly fine files into infected jar files. And doing this makes it hard for you to get rid of the malware. But think about this for a second. What if you were a Minecraft mod developer? You accidentally down download this malware, and now your Minecraft mod contains malware, and you upload that malware to CurseForge, and this is extremely bad if you are a super popular Minecraft mod maker, because now your popular Minecraft mod just became a piece of malware that will steal everyone's usernames and passwords, and those passwords can even go to your bank account, by the way. Now, fast forward to today, PC Gamer released an article saying Minecraft exploit makes it completely dangerous to play with un unpatched mods right now. And they're unpatched because a new vulnerability came out called Bleeding Pipe. And this blog post is by the MMPA. Now, what is this exploit? Well, Bleeding Pipe is an exploit being used in the wild, allowing full remote code execution on clients and servers running popular Minecraft mods on these versions of Forge and also other versions. Now, what full remote code execution means for the people that aren't on their computer 24-7 is that someone could send code to your Minecraft client, telling your Minecraft client to find your usernames and your passwords stored on your computer and send it off to the hacker server. It turns out the BS alarms are going off. This is the Common Weakness Enumeration website number 502, deserialization of untrusted data. Translation, this is a common issue. This is not some new vulnerability. This has been a thing for a while. And how long, you might ask? Well, uh, this thing's been known for 17 years. Now, I could read through this whole entire article and explain what deserialization means, but I need subway server footage and I need your attention, which is impossible in this day and age, so we're looking at photos. Basically, if you're on your computer, you need to send some information to a website, like your first name. So you get your first name, it gets serialized, so it gets turned into ones and zeros, it gets sent across the interwebs to the website you're trying to enter your first name into, and it deserializes it. Converts the ones and zeros into your first name, everything's all hunky-dory. Now what's going on with this Minecraft exploit is that the Minecraft server might be asking for some sort of information. Let's just say your Minecraft username. Well, a malicious hacker could instead of sending their Minecraft username, let's say they send some code. That code gets serialized, it gets sent across the internet, then the Minecraft server will deserialize it, and now it has that malicious code. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look at that code and say, I'm expecting a Minecraft username, you know, something simple. But instead I got 30 pages of code. That's not what I was asking for, and you're supposed to throw that stuff away. But in the case of a whole bunch of Minecraft mods, that's not the case, and in fact, you are at serious risk. And that 
risk got a whole lot worse. This whole blog post I'm talking about actually made things worse because what you're supposed to do is that if you stumble across a vulnerability, the ethical thing you're supposed to do is follow the hacker one vulnerability disclosure guidelines. But what these boil down to is basically if there is an issue, you're supposed to keep it quiet so that people can exploit it and cause problems. Things were on the down low. In fact, there was actually a Forge forum post back on July 9th that showed this vulnerability live. It was on a live stream. We're supposed to be on the down low. Well, MMPA said, however, this post did not go mainstream and most were not aware. So of course, let's keep making this blog post and make sure everyone knows that Minecraft can be exploited and there could be a lot of problems. And in fact, MMPA even knows this is a bad idea because they say it right here. After this series of announcements, the vulnerability was promptly patched on a specific part of Minecraft mods, but it is still present in most servers with these mods, as well as the original versions of these mods. This is the polar opposite of ethical disclosure. Thankfully, in the background, there were people that actually wanted to get this problem solved in an ethical manner. I'll have this linked in the description. It's a little GitHub page here, and it talks about the vulnerability. Now, this GitHub post is way more informative than all of this crap because it tells you how to protect yourself. The other blog post kind of has it, but it's not really easy to follow. And it also tells you some of the affected mods. Now, I should make you aware that this is not a complete exhaustive list. So if you don't see your Minecraft mod in this list, that doesn't mean you're safe. So it's probably a good idea to uh, follow these steps here. Just to show you in contrast, the proper way you're supposed to approach this stuff is literally by reading what the goal plan was with these contributors on this GitHub page. Initially, we were trying to investigate the whole issue privately and responsibly, but all those plans were foiled since a group named MMPA decided, you know what, let's just publish a blog post. And that's the blog post I've been looking at about the issue. Of course, they have some uh, critiques about it, many missing facts actors forced to release a statement and attempt to fix the issue immediately with a band-aid solution. But the main thing I want to point out is that these people, they're literally putting millions of modded Minecraft users at risk. Whew, that was a lot of info. And I have even more for you because you still need to be concerned about Minecraft mods, especially if you get them sent by someone you know. Now, just so we understand what's going on, we know from the Fracturizer incident that Minecraft mods can contain malware that steal your username and your password, your Discord account, your crypto a wallet. These .jar files can be just a nest of malware. And I've personally seen a rising number of cases where maybe a friend will DM you on Discord and they'll tell you to install a Minecraft mod. Maybe it's one of your homies from high school. He's got that girlfriend Minecraft mod and you just want to get down freaky together. So you download the Minecraft mod and you run Minecraft. Everything's all hunky-dory. Well, it actually turns out your friend messaged you and they said that they actually got their computer hacked and that they didn't send you that message. In fact, that message was sent by the hacker. And you connect the puzzle pieces together and you realize that you just got hacked and now your Discord account is sending out all those DMs talking about this Minecraft girlfriend mod. When you're downloading Minecraft mods, make sure you download them from a trustworthy place, like looking at bucket plugins or going on CurseForge and make sure it's from a reputable developer. And also just general advice, get a password manager like Bitwarden. I use it. I love it. It's super great. What about Minecraft anti-cheat tools? Well, this is Echo.ac and my goodness, I have a booger to pick with these guys. This is known as a screen share tool. It's just anti-cheat, by the way, but it is used for Minecraft PvP. Now, anti-cheat is a hot topic. For example, you might have seen this Some Ordinary Gamers video talking about Valorant's anti-cheat Vanguard. And the issue with Vanguard is that it both has privacy concerns and security concerns. Now, my thought process is that if people are making a stink about a big company like Riot Games, then why the hell would I trust a company called Echo.ac that I, you've probably never heard of before trying to do something similar. Now, of course, what does Echo.ac do? Well, you uh, download a little program, it goes on your system, and it scans absolutely everything. Checks if you have a VM, your connection type, what's your recycling bin, last time you cleared it, your country, your operating system, the scan speed, the game version. It checks your Minecraft accounts, your Minecraft versions, your resource packs, if you have any recording software. Oh, oh, there's file logs too. Oh, it's looking through your uh, local programs, your Opera GX. Um, why would I allow some random company to scan my computer just so people know I'm not cheating in a Minecraft server? I'm giving up a massive chunk of my personal
privacy just to play on a Minecraft server. But what about security? Well, uh, uh, look at this post. It's called Echo No. Get it? It's, it's a pun because the website's name is Echo. But I'll have this linked in the description because it's very nerdy, but it's talking about this massive vulnerability. They go through the whole entire bug. They do a lot of work, quite frankly. But what ends up happening is that if people use this exploit, they can do one of two things. They can do privilege escalation, which means they can make any process, so possibly malware, run at system privileges, which is uh, not good. But the second thing, this thing's going to blow you away. This anti-cheat software, in fact, allowed you to cheat. It turns out this exploit in the article has been extensively used for cheating because Echo.ac has been actually whitelisted by Easy Anti-Cheat. And the reason why they got whitelisted is because back in May 2022, uh, hundreds of Echo's own users, these people that use this thing and even paid for it, which pff, shocks me that people would even spend a dime on this thing, actually got banned for it. My point still stands though. Why would you put yourself at a potential security risk and a potential privacy risk by using some sort of Minecraft anti-cheat? That's just stupid. I I wouldn't use this thing in a million years, and this gets my mark of stay far, 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 far away. If someone tries to get you to install this thing, don't use it. Anyways, bye-bye. I love you. Mwah.